Welcome to about lesson 12 or so in our statistics course. Today we focus on a particular question. A question that goes something like this. Hey, I got an extreme result here. How extreme is it? Okay, when would you ask such a question? Well, I'll give you an example situation. Um, I'm going to erase this too. This isn't official notes, but let's say you've got some kind of a animal or something that has an average body temperature of 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And let's say that uh, the standard deviation is 1 degree Fahrenheit, so this will keep the, uh, the calculation simple. Remember the 95% typical range, right, was mu plus or minus two standard deviations. Mu means the mean. Plus or minus two standard deviations. So in this case, it would be 98 plus or minus two times one. In other words, 98 plus or minus two. So it would be 96 on the low side to 100 on the high side. That would be your typical range. So okay, you go around measuring some temperatures of these whatever they are, and you get one that has a temperature of 85 degrees. Seems a bit extreme, don't it? Seems a, I wouldn't say wee bit. It seems quite a bit on the low side. And so the question is, oh boy, yeah, that looks extreme. How extreme is it? And it turns out we have a nice way of quantifying it using some of our old nice probability concepts, right? So we use probability to quantify this question. So let me erase some more of this stuff. Okay. Here's our definition. So, um, refer to my notes here. So, these are typical values used, these p values. So, p less than 0.05 would be an example of a p value. Typical values that are used. If you have a p value of 0.05, notice the way we write it p less than 0.05. So, what's that saying? It's saying that there's less than 5% chance um, that this extreme result and we are always looking at extreme results when we have a, a p-value either this is really really high or this is really really low or it could even be this is really really different but anyway there's less than a 5% chance that this extreme result could just be done luck uh, how should I say this is just dumb luck, I guess we'll put it this way. Because you do expect some variation, right? Now, we were given an example where we said, oh, yeah, the average temperature is between 96 and 100. Well, just by dumb luck, every now and then, you have to expect you're going to get like a 95 and a half or something in there someday, and maybe someday you'll get a 101 or something like that, right? You, you don't expect, just because that's the typical range doesn't mean you're stuck inside that range forever. Remember, nothing's guaranteed in statistics. It's all about probability and chances and stuff. Uh, on the other hand, it can be so low, like 85 is way the heck over here, that you're starting to say, man, that doesn't seem likely at all. And so if we were to say that, in fact, that temperature has a p-value of 0.05, if we said this, we would say, yeah, there's less than a 5% chance that that would ever happen just by dumb luck. Now, 5% chance might not... Uh, impress you too much. So sometimes we use lower p-values. This would say there's less than a 2% chance that this result, this extreme result, is just dumb luck. p less than 0.01, can you guess? There's less than a 1% chance that this ex that this result would happen just by dumb luck. It's kind of like saying it, if you just did this over and over, this, this result would come up less than 1% of the time. 0.000, oh, excuse me, only two o's. 0 0.005, that would be less than a 0.5% chance. 0.002, that would be less than a 0.2% chance. 0.001, it would be less than a 0.1% chance that you would expect that to come up uh, just by dumb luck, just by, you know, the, the luck of the dice or whatever. Now, of course, going in this direction, using a lower and lower p-values means you're trying to impress, <laughs> right? Look, this result is really weird. It's got a p-value of you know, unless they're 0 0.001 or something. Man, that's not going to happen. Um, down here at the 0 0.001 level, this is usually good enough, I'll say, for most lab sciences, like you're testing a pill or something. Hey, does this pill work or does it actually make it worse? We might use a 0 0.001 um, uh, 
uh, p-value. 0.05 is used actually quite common. This is most common. It's kind of a workhorse level. Uh, I'm going to say for, I'm going to put it this way, fluffy, everyday news stories or just non-critical applications. I'll say other non-critical applications. It's not really super important. You're not going to end the world if you're wrong. You might just go with a 0.05. Yeah, you know what? That's like a 5% chance that that would happen by chance. So uh, it seems kind of weird. If you're trying to be more careful, you'll go down to 0.001, which is 0.1% chance. You know, like that that pill's working, and I'm saying it really is working. I mean, we're talking less than 0.1% chance that this is just a dumb luck result that we got here in our experiment or whatever. Uh, just for reference, I'll put PS. Uh, where am I? Is my pen working? Okay. PS. You'll need something like... <laughs> something like P less than 0 0.000001 or so to begin doubting a physical theory. <laughs> like to begin doubting quantum mechanics or something. A theory in physics, that's what I'll put. I actually saw that. Uh, they were saying, yeah, Six Sigma, take Six Sigma. Maybe you saw that lady. She's on YouTube. She's like, oh, yeah, take Six Sigma, which we'll, we'll find out what that means later. But it's something on the order of a p-value less than 0. 0.00001, or else I'm not going to doubt the standard model of particle physics. I just won't. <laughs> so I guess hard scientists demand a really low p-value, whereas people walking around reading newspapers or whatever or even just people working in an assembly line on a factory, they might use p-values of 0.05 to say everything's up to snuff, something like that. So we just want to be able to use any p-value that we wish. Um, so anyway, here's an example where we can actually talk about some actual real number p-values. So this is a nice little binomial distribution that we've got here. Biff has an unfair coin which means it does not come up heads 50% of the time. It comes up head 40% of the time. I don't know how he does that, but somehow this, you sanded the corners. I don't know. So it comes up heads 40% of the time. So just accept that. So if he tosses this coin 20 times, we expect the following number of heads. This is a binomial probability distribution. You remember how this works? It wasn't so far, so long ago. You get this by saying, you know, P of X, well, equals like uh, remember it's got the ncr and then it's got the p to the x and then it's got the q to the n minus x that's what that's where these numbers come from okay so if you actually wanted to do this if you wanted to crank this out these are the probabilities that you would get and you'll see that the probabilities are quite low that you're only going to get zero heads and really low really low by the way zero plus means just barely more than zero. It's zero for our purposes in a calculation, although you know that theoretically it's not zero. You could get 18 heads. It could happen. But ain't bloody likely, as they say. So that's what we use a zero plus to mean. Anyway, not likely to get 18. You're still not likely to get 17. Or look at these low probabilities, right? Hey, we're up near 1.5% chance of getting 13 or so, right? It peaks around where? Like 8 is the highest, and why does it peak at 8? Because 40% of 20 tosses, 40% of 20 is 8. So we do expect 8 on average, so to speak, over the long haul, if you repeat it over and over again. Remember all these caveats, nothing's guaranteed, you know. But by random, the theory of random chance, we expect 8 on average. That's why we have a, a peak probability here. Okay, and it kind of makes like a... Kind of like like one of these shapes, right? It's almost like a bell curvy shape, but it's a binomial distribution. Okay, cool. So what are these numbers over here? It says cumulative. What I've done here, so this, this number is actually equal to P of 0 plus P of 1. So it's the chance of getting 1 or fewer. Get it? It's the chance of getting 0 or 1, 1 or fewer. That's what I mean by cumulative probability. And then this probability here, how do you get 0 0.00362? You take the 0 0.00004 and you add the 0 0.0053 and then you add the add 0 0.003. Oh, excuse me. That's not what you're adding. You're adding these numbers. That's better. You're adding the 0 0.00004 and you're adding the 0 0.00049 and you're adding the 0 0.00309 and you're ending up with this number here. 
um, and so on. So these are all just cumulative probabilities all the way down the line. So these probabilities are adding uh, from zero. So this is the chance of getting five or fewer. This point one two five six one is five or fewer. These are also cumulative, but they're adding the other way. So here I add zero plus zero plus zero plus point oh 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 four, and I get point oh 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 four. I add point oh 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 two seven to it, and I get point oh 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 three one, and, and so on. So these are cumulative. This particular one here, point one two seven five zero, this would be eleven or more, right? So they're cumulative probabilities. The answer. So where this is saying, hey, the chance of getting three is 0.012, this is saying, hey, the chance of getting three or less, three or two or one or zero, is more like 0.016. Okay, so that's what that's how this table's working here. Okay, so p-values. Remember our typical values. We use 0.05 as a workhorse. 0.02 is common. 0.01 is common. 0.005. 0.002 and 0.001. These are our common work uh, values of p-values. Common p-value values, whatever you want to say. So let's get some green going. You have to look at the cumulative in order to do this, right? So less than 0.001, where would that be? Well, notice you have to go this, this extreme because this number is greater than 0.001, so it's not that. So it's, uh, we can say results... of 0 and 1 are unusually low, we might say. They're extreme, right? They're on the wing. They're, they're way low. But they're unusually low with a p-value of less than 0 0.001, which means they're really, really low. Less than a 0.1% chance that would ever happen by chance. Uh, it's like a 1 in a 1,000. So it's like if you actually did this flipping yourself, you'd have to, on average, try like a 1,000 times before you saw a result of 0 or 1. 0 0.002, well, would be the same, actually. 0 0.005, though, we could come up this far, right? Because this is less than 0 0.005. So results of 0 to 2 are unusually low at a p-value of less than uh, 0 0.005, right? So we'll try it divvy this up into ranges here. Uh, let's see, can we get a, let's see, I'm looking at this uh, 0.12, right? Now that's not less than any of these things, so we're not going up that high. How about this 0.05 here? Well, that's not even less than 0.05, because this is 0.05 plus some, 0.0509, that's no good. So like here, results of 0 to 3 are unusually low. We could call it to 0 0.05, but we could also call it 0 0.02, right? If I wanted to go as tight as I could, I'd probably not even say that. I'd say, hey, this this is really, excuse me, this is really low point, oh man, I lost one of my zeros. This is really low 0 0.001. What the? 0 0.001. This one's pretty low, point, less than 0 0.005 p-value. A result up to 3 is a p-value of 0 0.02. That's what we got going on on this end. What do we got going on on the other end? Maybe you could mark this one up yourself. Have I got a 0 0.05 anywhere? Uh, that's not less than 0 0.05, but this is. I could use that as less than 0 0.05. I could use it as less than 0 0.02, as 0 0.01. I could not use it as 0 0.005. So anyway, 14 to 20 is significant, we might say, at a p-value under, what's the best number I can use? I can't use 0 0.005, but I could use 0 0.01. Significant at the 0 0.01 level. This one here, what's this? This is 15 to 20. It's less than 0 0.002. That's pretty good. Um... We never really, well, if you want to be less than 0.01, you'd use this one. So 16 to 20 at the p-value of 0.001 and so on. So there's certain degrees to which you can be impressed. <laughs> so like I say, which p-value do you use? Usually you um, usually you uh, you pick the p-value first, and then you 
look at your results and say, am I impressed? You know, you, you say, oh, okay, for the kind of work we're doing, we'll be impressed if the p-value is this. What kind of work are we doing? We're doing lab work. Okay, 0.01, oh, excuse me, 0.001 is what we need. What kind of work are we doing? Well, we're measuring the strength of bolts. Okay, 0.05 will work, you know, whatever. Um, I'm going to put a little PS here. If draw this sideways as a graph, what would this look like? Well, we put the probability on the y-axis, and then this would be how many uh, how many heads or whatever you get going this way. So that's the x. So you could have as few as zero. You could have as, at most twenty. Right? Remember that peaks at about eight. So that's your maximum probability at about eight, and it's. Kind of not quite symmetrical, but it's it's kind of got like a hump in the middle, and it comes kind of down like this or something, right? So when we say uh, when we're talking about p-values un under a certain value, when we're talking about really low values, we're kind of talking about stuff over here. This is unusually low results. Stuff like zero to three might count as unusually low over here results up here someplace these would be unusually high results and by the way ooh, we need a new color okay uh, the stuff in the middle these would be the normal results normal results uh, are in the middle and by normal, we mean most of the time when you throw this coin or these coins, you're going to get results in here somewhere. So that's kind of a picture of what's going on here. So again, the p-value is a number that tells us, geez, how far out are you on the wing or on the right wing or on the left? How far out? How extreme is that? Okay. Um, let me see. Is there something else I wanted to say on this page? Yeah, I guess I'll just kind of put a PS here and say, remember, even if you have a p-value less than 0.01, it doesn't prove anything, right? It doesn't prove anything. Lightning can hit twice. It's statistics, after all. It's all based on probability. Things happen by random chance. You can get 20 by random chance. It's not likely. <clears throat> it's got a p-value less than 0 0.001. But we will say it supports somebody's claim. Somebody says, hey, man, this is, this is so high, I don't believe it. Well, that would, this would support. A claim let's say I'll just say a claim we'll see some examples of claims in the next next page or so we never prove anything that's the main point I want to make here right statistics is cannot be used to prove anything it's not possible to prove anything by rolling dice <laughs> by, by anything that happens at chance there's no such thing chance is chance chance will do what it will do lightning will strike the same spot 18 times if it wants you can't prove that it won't because it because it could it's all theoretically possible. But p-values give us confidence when placing bets. Let's put it that way. You can't guarantee you're going to win the lottery. But if you have a one in a million, if, if the odds are in your favor, let's say you might place the bet. So that's how I'll, that's how I'll uh, qualify this p-value stuff. So anyway, let's look at some eggs. Uh, some specific examples so back to blue here so this is what I'm talking about claims so often we use p-values to uh, to measure a claim so to speak so we got this Biff guy and he says hey man I got psychokinetic powers he can force objects to move just with the power of his mind that's what he says we're gonna test it he says well I'll, I'll give you proof uh, you can, and remember, no proof is not possible, but he's saying, I'll give you proof. I will prevent Bonnie's arrows from hitting the target. That's what I'll do. So Bonnie's an archer. She shoots at a target, and it says here that she typically hits the target on 80% of tries. That's her, that's her record or whatever. And so he's going to kind of stand on the sidelines and kind of will the arrow to, 
to uh, miss. <laughs> so, how many times should the arrow miss before we start to believe this guy is the question. How many misses in a row would it take to support his claim? Again, you never prove anything, but we want to support his claim and say, you know, something does seem to be happening here. I wonder what. I wonder what. This might be worth a closer look. Okay, how weird does the result have to be before we even begin to take this guy seriously? So what we need to do then is we need to calculate probabilities of missing. Missing once. The probability of missing once, well, he hits, she hits the target 20, 80% of the tries. So that's a 0.2 chance of missing. So if Bonnie misses the next arrow, are you impressed? I'm not. It's going to happen 20% of the time. How impressive is that? It's not. Okay, twice in a row. Well, to miss it twice in a row, the calculation would be miss it once and then miss it again. 0.2 times 0.2, you would get 0.04. Okay, now if I want to be impressed at the 0.01 level, I got to keep going. Let's miss it three times in a row. So the pattern here would be you'd take 0.2 times 0.2 times 0.2 or 0.2 cubed. And I worked this out. Let me grab my table here. Here we go 0.008. Still not less than 0.001. Okay, let's miss it four times in a row. Can this Biff guy make Bonnie miss four times in a row? 0.2 to the fourth power is 0.0016. It's still greater than 0.001. Five times in a row. 0 0.2 to the fifth power. So theoretically, Bonnie would only miss the target five times in a row in less than, let's see, make a percent out of that. <laughs> or in about 0.032% of tries. That's that's really low, right? We have found our p-value less than 0.01. So let's write that in a different color here. Five misses in a row has a p-value. And again, we use our typical values, less than 0.001. So if he sat there on the sideline making a funny face or whatever at Bonnie. And he, well, no, he says psychokinetic. He doesn't need a funny face. He just needs his mind. He, he can even stand behind her and not freak. She doesn't even have to know that he's there, right? He's just, he's making the arrows move. So if, if he said, watch, I'll do it right now, and then she missed five in a row, I think you'd be a little bit impressed. You would have a level of support for this guy's claim. You'd say, wow. Wow, that's, that's, wow. <laughs> that's what you would say. Now, this question is interesting because um, part B, how many misses to be impressed at a 0.05 level? Notice right away, twice in a row. <laughs> Two misses in a row is already, um, it has a p-value, I should say, of less than uh, 0.05 and remember I was saying 0.05 that's that's a quite commonly used p-value um, any news story or whatever it's going to be 0.05 so in that situation just just having Bonnie miss twice in a row you'd be going wow he did it he's psychokinetic he can do it wow okay I tend myself to be a, a little less impressed by a 0.05. I, I like to go down. You know, 0.01 is pretty good. Okay, it's not enough to change a theory of physics, but it's enough to impress me, right? So five misses in a row starts to be impressive, is what we decide here. What do we got here? Sergey also claims to have psychokinetic powers. As proof, he says, I'm going to help all the arrows go to the target. So he's going to stand on the sidelines behind Bonnie. She won't even know he's there, and he's just going to will the arrows into the target. Okay. Now, Bonnie typically hits the target 80% of the time. So how many hits in a row will it take to support Sergei's claim at these significance levels? Okay, so this one is a little harder to get to because you have to keep multiplying so many times. So uh, on any attempt, on any one attempt... The probability of getting a hit is 80%. So if you say, watch, I'll make her hit the target, and then boom, she hit the target, you'd say, well, I'm not impressed. She does that 80% of the time, you know. It's not impressive, right? Okay, how about two in a row? So two in a row, you would have to take the 0.8 times a 0.8 again, 
that comes out to 0 0.64 or 64 percent still not impressive right it takes a while before it starts to get impressive and to show you what I mean I got all the way down to 17 in a row <laughs> so you take 0 0.8 chance of a hit do that 17 oops, 17 times in a row that comes out to a 0 0.022518 chance 0 0.022518 Okay, so that's definitely below the 0.05 level. It's starting to get impressive. Um, I did 18 in a row, and it came out to uh, 0.018, 014. So that actually answers question B right there. So um, 18 or more has, I guess not is, but has P value less than 0 0.02 that answers part B don't do that okay answers part B cool got to got to do more arrows if you're gonna convince us at a tighter level let's go to 0.002 is what we're aiming at so I had to keep going I had to keep multiplying by 0 0.08 I got down to 27 times in a row 0.8 to the 27 power is 0 0.002418 still not less than 0 0.002 but when you do 28 times in a row, now it's 0 0.001934. And so we found it. We found it. So 28 or, or more has a p-value under 0.002. So that answers part A of the question. So if you want to be impressed at a 0.02 level, You'd have, to see, uh, you'd have to see Bonnie hit 18 in a row, and you'd say, wow, Sergey might be doing something here. If you want to be impressed at, impressed at a 0 .002 level, you wouldn't be that impressed until, until she got 28 in a row. And then you'd say, huh, I wonder if this guy's on to something. What's he got going on here? What's he doing? Now, of course, you're probably not going to say, yeah, he's psychokinetic. You're going to say, what is he doing? <laughs> he must be doing something else. What, do you slip a vitamin in her drink? What do you do? Okay, so you kind of see how this is working. Two more examples to do here. This one is actually different enough that we should do it. We should definitely do it. So we get the Sheriff of Nottingham offers a bag of gold to the best archer in the Shire. Suddenly, a masked archer appears, takes 50 shots. Who is that masked archer? Well, could it be Bonnie? Could it be Bonnie? Well, we know that Bonnie's hit rate is 80%, right? So might be Bonnie, especially if, if the archer hits at 80%, we'd say, ooh, that could be Bonnie. We, it wouldn't be proof that it's Bonnie, of course, but we'd say, ooh, that could be Bonnie. On the other hand, if this archer shoots at a 0%, we might say, that can't be Bonnie, right? So the question is, at a 0 .005 level, what would it take? How many shots would it take? How many hits would it take to convince us that, nah, that can't be Archie. Uh, Archie. That can't be Bonnie. That can't be Bonnie. So, um... This is different because it kind of goes like this. Uh, let's see. How many hits? Did she, she took 50 shots. So our distribution ends at 50. 80% uh, of 50 is 40. So that's where we expect it to peak. right? And it's going to look something like this. It won't, be, it won't be perfectly symmetrical, but it'll look you know, something like this. Almost towards a bell curve. It's not a bell curve. It's a binomial distribution. But anyway, it looks kind of like that, like a hump there. So when we say not Bonnie, all we mean is not 40. Not going to get 40. In fact, we mean a little more than that. We mean not going to be anywhere near 40. That's what we really mean. Not going to be anywhere near 40. We expect 40 from Bonnie. If we don't get anywhere near 40, we'll say, nah, that can't be Bonnie. That can't be Bonnie. So um, that kind of means getting either a result up here too high to be Bonnie. <laughs> or getting a result way low, too low for Bonnie, right? There's two sides to this question, right? Now we want the total probability to be 0 0.005. Now that's the total here and here, which means we have to put half on each side. So we have to say 0 0.0025 over here and 0 0.0025 over here. That way they add up 
to 0 0.05, uh, 0.005. That's what we need. So notice this is very different. First of all, we're going to have to be searching both on the high side for something that's high enough and on the low side for something that's low enough. But also, we're not using the 0 0.005 at either end. We have to use half at each end. So 0 0.0025 on this end and 0 0.0025 on this end. Okay, so that's the nature of the problem. Then you have to go do some work and find it. Now happily, I don't have to, you don't have to uh, do this out by hand. It's a binomial distribution, but I'm going to say there are binomial distribution calculators online. I invite you to look around for your favorite one. I found one that suited my purposes. And I'll give you the link for it right here. It's home page dot D-I-V-M-S, whatever that means. Division of Math and Sciences? I don't know. Dot U Iowa dot edu slash. And I guess this must be the guy's name or something, or the girl's name, whatever it is. M Bognar. What is that, Hungarian? I have no, no idea. M. Bognar, that's an A. By the way, this is in your homework too, so don't worry about it. Applets slash bin dot html. That's the website I used, and, it, and you can use it to figure out the probability for any value you feel like. And um, in fact, you can select the probability that x is less than or equal to some value. You can also calculate, ask it to calculate the probability that x is greater than or equal to some value. It's really nice. So you could like just guess, hey, is it 48? And, and you just, you put the 48 in for x and then you say, hey, what's the, stop it, stop it. What's the chance that you get something 48 or more? And it'll just tell you, boom. And uh, by the way, <laughs> 48 actually is a good number. So when x is 48, the chance that you get something equal or bigger to 48 came out to uh, 0 0.00128. 0.00128. I tried 49 to see if I could get away with 49, or not 49, 47, I'm sorry. Let me remake that table. Let me put the 47 on top. That's better. So if you look at 47, it comes out that the probability of being 47 or higher, and I think I grabbed the wrong number before, is 0.005. 6, 5, and the probability of 48 over here is 0 0.001, 2, 8. Okay, cool. Now remember what we're looking for, less than 0 0.0025 on the, on the one edge, and so that doesn't work, but this does. And so 48 to 50 counts as extreme on the high side. You go down to the low side, so you just, again, you just plug in some numbers and ask the calculator, hey, what's the probability of that anyway? And uh, let's see now here. I put in a 30, God, you line up your numbers, will ya? Doo, doo, doo. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so the prob I put in a 32, and I'm like, is that low enough? And the probability of getting 32 or less came out to point oh oh. Two five one, not quite low enough, right? And so I had to put in a thirty-one, and the probability of thirty-one or less is point zero 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 nine three, which is certainly low enough. And so zero to thirty-one on the low side. So the answer is if this archer gets zero to thirty-one or 48 to 50 hits it's not Bonnie is what we would conclude we don't have proof that it's not Bonnie but we're willing to bet at a p-value less than 0.005 okay we're willing to bet with a p-value less than 0.005 sometimes we don't say p-value we just say p less than 0.005 whatever okay so that's that's kind of how these things work right are you willing to bet again you can't prove anything you can't but you can support 
So we, we state it as though it's true. It'd probably be better to say supports the claim that blah, 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 whatever. But let's not worry about that right now. One more example. Take this, give this a quick read and see if you can uh, see what's different about this one. I'll tell you what's different about this one. It's not a binomial distribution. That's what's different. This is one of those random arrival process. It's meteors after all. Meteors, random arrival process. This is a Poisson distribution. So it's a random arrival process. And so before I even read the question, I know that we're going to be dealing with this kind of a formula. The probability of x hits, got to grab out your formula, mu to the x, e to the minus mu over x factorial. Do you remember what the mu is? Mu is number of expected hits in a particular time period. In the time period of interest, whatever the time period of interest is. That's how these Poisson distributions work. Okay, fine. So now let's read. There's a false prophet. I wonder if he says, hey, I'm a false prophet. Probably not. Anyway, false prophet claims he will end the world by bringing meteor upon meteor crashing into the earth. Oh, no. If Earth normally receives one big meteor every 20 years, that's the normal rate of hits, theoretically. Let's just say it is. One big meteor every 20 years. <clears throat> okay, so how many large meteors would need to hit in the next five years for us to be a, hey, 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 this guy's up to, what's this guy doing? What's, he, what's going on here? In order to support the false prophet's claim, and let's go really low here. He's a false prophet after all. You're going to believe he's a false prophet. I'm probably going to demand some high level of evidence. How about 0.001 level? That would be a higher level of evidence, right? Let's not use 0.05. That'll hit the tabloids right away. We don't want to hit the tabloids right away. We want to have some like more serious evidence. Let's put it that way. So the question is, how many meteors have to hit? Well, you remember how this goes. First of all, you have to figure out what the mu is. So they're saying one big one every 20 years. So that's one meteor every 20 years, right? That's that's the rate of arrival. And we're not interested in 20 years. We're interested in five years. So we have to scale this down to five years. So you set up a proportion to do that. And very quickly, you figure out that mu is equal to um, 0.25. We expect one quarter of a meteor every five years. Huh. That's not very many. Okay, well, a quarter of a meteor every five years. Cool. So now we can start putting together our little probability table here. We could say, well, the chance of getting none of these. Remember, if if, if uh, x is zero, you raise it to the zero power, that's a one. Zero factorial is one. And so this formula simplifies quite nicely to just e to the minus mu, e to the minus 0.25. And the value comes out to, what is it, point, uh, let me move this over a little bit. I'm going to need a little more room here. Move over. Over you go. Okay, that's a little better. Let's try that. That comes out to point uh, seven seven eight eight zero one seven seven eight eight zero one. So seventy seven point nine percent chance, seventy eight percent chance. We're not going to get hit. Come on. How about getting hit exactly once? Well following this formula over here. You have to take the mu, which is 0.25. You have to raise it to the x power. And remember, that's our x. So we're raising it to the 1 power. And then it's time this same, e to the negative 0.25. And then it's over 1 factorial. And I've worked that out, and I got 0.194700. Okay, cool. So what do we got here? We got a 77.9% chance of getting hit not at all. We have about a 19.5% chance of getting hit exactly once in this five-year period. Okay, fine. Now, what we're really interested in is the probability of a, of a particular range, right? So let's, let's work some cumulative numbers while we're at it here. So, if you, so of course, the cumulative here is still 0 0.778801. But if you add this and this together, the cumulative is 0.973. Wow. 0.973501 which is already telling us that it's a something like a 0 0.97, something like a 97% chance of getting hit either zero or one times. Wow. 
Probably not going to take a lot of hits for us to be impressed, is what I'm thinking here. So, come on you. Okay, probability of two of these. Well, you'd take the 0.25, you'd raise it to the 2 power. This is the same, and then you'd have a 2 factorial. Notice these are the only two things that keep changing, is the, the exponent and the factorial. Those are the two parts that keep changing every time you change the, change the x here. So, I worked it out, what I get. For this thing, I got a 0.024. 338 and so the cumulative came out to 0.997 boy we're getting there 839 so this is like a 99.7 percent chance okay now we're trying to get to a 0.001 level what does that mean 0.001 level now we're talking about extreme on the high side 0.001 level on the high side which means we're looking for a lot of meteors. These numbers over here are adding up to the left, right? So right now I'm at 0.997839 to the left. What would that be to the right? 1 minus 0.997839 would be what? I might as well ask Mr. Buttons. 1 minus 0.997839. 839. Boom. It's a 0 0.002161. Still not less than the 0 0.001 that we're looking for. Oh, gonna have to do another meteor. Crash. So this is going to be 25 to the 3 power, e to the negative 0.25 over 3 factorial. That number comes out to 0 0.002, 028. So the cumulative is 0.999867. Nine, nine, and so in this particular case, let's get this stuff out of here. Let's use a different color. If I had this number, 0.999867, representing the area to the left, then the area over here on this right side would be 1 minus that, 999. 867. The area over here would be 0. 0.000133. Is that less than 0. 0.001? It sure is. And so finally we are impressed. Ding, 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 ding. So three or more hits in next five years would support the profit. <laughs> support the FP, the false profit at 0 0.001 that's a one that's a one that's a one that is so one level we'd have a p value of point p less than 0 0.001 if we had three meteors in five years remember we're only expecting 0.25 in any particular year so it's, it does it barely adds up to more than one that we would expect so three or more we start to say okay something's something's funny here what's going on what are we get going through an asteroid belt what are we doing here um, it'd be enough to pay attention okay again nothing ever proves anything it would not prove that he's the fault of some people I suppose it would prove it but that's because they're not thinking statistically they're thinking with their guts instead of their statistics. So that's why you take a statistics course. You, you want to get used to this whole idea of assessing probabilities and stuff like that. Do we have proof or do we not have proof? Or what's what's the level at which we're willing to bet? I guess you'd be willing to bet at a 0.001 level, maybe. But okay, I think that's all the examples, right? Yep, that's all the examples. Cool. We'll call it a day.